Okay, so this is the question. It says a uh, man is running on a straight road perpendicular. Okay, I gotta diagram this. So there is some kind of a railroad track. And I'm guessing, yeah, yeah, this is uh, what I want my x axis to be. And uh, it says the man is running perpendicular. So let me just call this y axis. And there's a somebody running here in this direction with some speed Vy that is given in the question. The train is moving with some speed, okay, um, Vx, with respect to the track. What is the speed of the man with respect to a passenger sitting at rest in the train? Oh, uh, I guess this is a relatively simple question. So let me draw the um, train. So if this is the train and there's a passenger here, the train is moving with the speed of Vx. Um, yeah, with respect to the track. So, um, so one might say, okay, Vy is equal to 13 meters per second and Vx is equal to um, 40 meters per second and this is uh, these are the speeds in the uh, unprimed coordinate uh, frame s which uh, we'll call that's the reference frame of track and the uh, rest of the question is what is the speed of the man with respect to a passenger sitting at rest so the reference frame of the passenger let me call that frame as prime and we can express these um, velocities in this prime the coordinate system and i think a lot of you actually can answer this um, kind of intuitively so if you are looking at for example the speed of the uh, train itself the vx prime should be zero meters per second because in the reference frame of the passenger train isn't moving it's at rest it's the track that's moving backward at the speed of 40 meters per second. So when you look at the speed of the person who's running relative to the tracks, then you can draw a quick diagram that um, you have the speed of Vy, that's the velocity of the runner um, in the frame S. And to shift it to frame S prime, you kind of have to imagine pushing this uh, by the amount of Vx um, so that the kind of the x component of velocity of the runner is the same as the x component of velocity of the tracks, which in frame S prime is moving backward at uh, 40 meters per second. This is for the uh, tracks speed. So this velocity here, or uh, this, yeah, this arrow represents uh, let me call this V1 for run of the first guy. V, this represents V1 prime. So once you figure out this much, then the rest is actually pretty simple. Um, you know, Vx was 40. I have a right triangle. So you use Pythagorean theorem. Let me use my calculator to the calculation. Square root of 13 squared plus 40 squared. Um, and the answer is 42.1. And if you are doubting if that's correct. Oh, sorry, the question regenerated. For this version of the question, it's 15 and 25. Let me do it that way. 15 and 25. <laughs> 29.2. So yeah, it's correct. So, you know, you might wonder, what is doing this? Uh, what is this doing in a special relativity uh, <laughs> chapter or problem set? Um, so this question is turning out to be a lot simpler than what I was fearing, because um, these are non-relativistic speeds. Uh, let me look ahead to the next question that I was gonna do, and just to see if they are both non-relativistic. So. Uh, with this question, all right, uh, I think I can use most of the um, 
most of the information here. So let me just copy it over and I'll just uh, change them to uh, make it fit this new situation. So what's changing is that the man is now running on a straight road that's making some angle theta. Let's pull this theta with the train track. All right, let's uh, um, do this carefully. So direction of the road that is away from the track at a speed of all right, uh, let me just throw my interpretation of the question. So the way I see it, there is, um, and uh, I'm, I'm making some assumptions as I do it, that's why I'm trying to spell it out. So there's a road that's going this way, and this is the angle theta. Um, and the man is running in this direction, away from the track at a speed of uh, 12 meters per second, okay? The train is moving with a speed of um, so 37 meters per second with respect to the track. What is the speed of the man with respect to a passenger sitting at rest in the train? Um, so again, for the passenger, this Vx prime is zero because passengers moving in the train uh, from that uh, prime, frame as prime frame. It is the track that is moving backward at 37 meters per second. Um, so the only thing that really changes is that you have to take care and break this velocity, if we want, into two components. There's the y component, v1, y, y, and there's this x component, v1x, and um, this uh, y component will treat it the exact same way we did it before. We'll just uh, put it in here. This will be v1y. And with the x component, we kind of have to think through and figure out how this x component adds with the speed of the train. And I think the way it makes sense to me intuitively would be our um, the leg here should be vx minus v1y. Or, or you know, if you want to make this the signed quantity, what it really was, was as a, um, com uh, as a vector quantity, it was v1x minus vx, but I've already drawn it going to the left. So, so yeah, and the, the algebraic expressions for these are sim relatively simple. So if this is a theta, then, uh, the y component is the magnitude v1 times the sine theta. It's the same as this opposite side. And uh, v1x, that's v1 times cosine theta. So this whole expression will be vx, the number we have, minus uh, v1 cosine theta. And with these two numbers, I can calculate this using Pythagorean theorem. Let me do that. So v1 is 12, 12 times the sine of, oh, I have to convert the degrees to, uh, let me actually do it this way. Um, so let me declare the variables. I have v1, uh, theta, and vx. So the expression I'm trying to calculate is uh, square root of uh, v1 times the sine of theta squared plus vx minus v1 times uh, cosine theta squared. Okay, that looks like decent expression. So now what I do is substitute it, the values. v1 is uh, 12 meters per second, or actually let me, um, the question probably regenerated. So let me use the version that is in the question or it will regenerate, okay. So my V1 is um, 10 meters per second. My uh, V2 is 29, not V2, Vx is 29 meters per second. And my angle theta is 35 degrees converted into, uh, so into radian. So it will be uh, times pi divided by 180. All right. So I have 21.6, let's hope that's correct. 
yeah, that's it. So, uh, so you know, so this is Galilean relativity. Um, it actually, um, uh, so Galilean relativity. If you draw the picture and think through it, for a lot of people, it'll make intuitive sense. And if to the point, to the degree that it makes intuitive sense, I say, all right, go with your intuition, work out an answer, and see if it's right. If it's right, great. Um, now, to the question, what is this question doing in this set? I thought the next question is, uh, yeah. So this is the relativistic scenario. And um, what I would say is, so this question one uh, deliberately gives you a non-relativistic situation where if you just use Galilean relativity, you'll get a correct answer. And you can actually use formulas in special relativity. You'll just get an answer that's very close still to the Galilean answer. And, um, and having done the non-relativistic case in this question one, my intent is that in the second question, you will see the non the, you will see the relativistic scenario where if you are using the same method that you used in question one, it won't work. Um, or I guess, you know, it does ask you, what does Galilean relative tell you? And um, that answer is not physically correct. So, so that's the intent of these questions here. Um, kind of reminder of the idea of relative velocity that you have uh, seen before, or even if you haven't seen it explicitly, that once you kind of the, draw the picture and think about it, it makes sense to a lot of people. Um, the same doesn't really hold for the relativistic formulas for velocity transformation. And uh, until I realized what the question was asking, I was going to say something about how how I don't like relativistic velocity transformation. And it's really for two reasons. Um, one is that um, I mean it's a complicated formula. Just take a look at it, like look at it and think. Uh, do you think I have this memorized? I don't have this memorized, and <laughs> and uh, and even if you use the approach that I would recommend, which is using the uh, momentum energy four vector, even in that approach, um, still the results are not always intuitive. It's just uh, you know. Uh, when the quantities you are dealing with are Lorentz of four vectors, it makes you remembering the formula easier. Um, but like when you look at the relativistic velocity transformation, you do kind of need to spend some time making sense of the formula. Um, and uh, there, there is a part of it that kind of resembles your Galilean uh, Galilean uh, transformation. But it's uh, I gotta tell you, it's not intuitive. <laughs> um, a lot of modern physics is. Um, 